direct from the six, world-renowned, Canada's largest city, with Canada's biggest thinkers, visionaries, and hustlers. This is Startup Talk, featuring the founders, funders, innovators, and community leaders who've led Canada's startup ecosystem right here in Toronto. You'll hear the challenges, the failures, the successes. Toronto's Startup Podcast gives you the full story direct from the entrepreneurs and influencers who've made a difference. Now, the host of Startup Talk, the founder of Toronto Starts, the Startup Coach. We might as well jump into it right away. And I want to start with the person on my left, on my right, Bob. Mm. From Futurepreneur. How are you doing, Bob? I'm good. How are you, Craig? I'm doing I, uh, great. In recognition of uh, past work hours, I wore my Star Wars sweatshirt. I hope that's okay. <laughs> uh, because my Futurepreneur one's in the laundry and I didn't time this well. But nonetheless, I've got my, my Star Wars sweatshirt. We're a community <laughs> full of geeks. It's okay. <laughs> I knew it. And Alex from Consulta. Hello. You can't get rid of me. Hello. I'm everywhere all the time. Thanks for having me back, Craig, and not kicking me off your show. Because uh, I had a good time last time, but you know, I always have more to say. So, you know, I'll be the I'll be the filler. I'll have an opinion for every week all the time. Uh, but this is again like a favorite. This is really exciting. Love uh just talking to you guys and um yeah, I can't, I can't wait for tonight's topics. I'm very excited. There's a lot in there. So I don't know. You got four topics and each one to me is an episode. So <laughs> I'm pretty excited to uh, to get the little debate battle happening. We'll see if we get some arguments going too, or if it's going to be a lot of groupthink. I'm, I'm debating to, I can't wait to see if we're going to agree or not and how that's going to go. And Will Greenblatt, one of the best pitch coach or the best pitch coach in Toronto. How you doing, Will? <laughs> Good. Very, very good. Um, it's really fun to be here. I am so new to this whole thing. So like, don't know really how it goes, even though I've seen a little bits and pieces of the other thing. So I'll be the newbie here, but I'm really excited to kind of see how it is. And I don't even know what the topics are. So, but I'm ready to go. <laughs> uh, you didn't get the oh, email. Good. All right. Well, I'm not. <laughs> but I'm raring to go. I'm All just right, going to take well. the contrarian position. Whatever anyone says, I'm just going to dig my stick in the ground like super hard against it. I well, love it. Really happy then. I was like, but well, that's what I usually like to do. It's I don't do any research or prep, and then I come and just offend people with Coming whatever hot, they yeah. say. I <laughs> with no information. Yeah. <laughs> oh mercy! So let's get <laughs> right into it. Nope. With the first, uh, with the first question, um, with AI vo voice cloning startup Eleven Labs now ventured at over a billion dollar. I think it was over one point one billion. And others looking for similar val similar valuations. I saw an AI company just announced twenty three billion a uh, twenty three million raised here in um, Toronto. Yeah, out of Creative Destruction Labs. Are we about to see the AI bubble burst? Are we at peak AI? Who's going first, guys? No. I, <laughs> I meant no. I'm not, I'm not going, but now I'm in. So okay. they're <laughs> not in. I, you know, what's interesting is, um, you know, we, some of us here are a bit longer in the tooth. So we've seen valuations and industries change, right, over some period of time. And again, I, I don't have the, the same in-depth background that Craig and Alex have in this industry. But my experience generally when we see these sort of industry fluctuations or when we see valuations uh, go up and down, I, it's usually reactive based on surrounding factors, right? Outside factors. So we think about economy, we think about technology, exactly. I don't know that AI can go as up and down as quickly as what we've seen in the past, whether it's real estate, whether it's the dot-com bubble, et cetera. I think there are so many sub variants and sub levels to AI that we might see it slow down. Like certainly we might see it sort of uh, not see the explosive growth, but I have trouble seeing this bubble, bubble burst anytime soon because there's just so many variations of its application right that's just my thought i i have a different approach to it i think yeah. we're six months maybe a year away from this bursting mm -hmm. because an ai voice, voice cloning startup worth at 1.1 billion how many voice cloning software have each of us looked at on our own yeah Right. You know, Doesn't, so yeah. 
Yeah. So I'm saying is, you know, these things aren't unique as they once were and that these apps are becoming a dime a dozen. I don't think we're going to stop hearing about new AI and new functionality. I think we're going to see a lot less of this type of valuation because people are going to realize that it's easier and easier to build these tools. Everyone's doing it. True. But again, remember, there are so many sub variants variants of AI. So for example, uh, that speech recording AI, great. But then what if there's like speech recording in different languages, speech recording in Klingon? Like what, you know, there's so many different <laughs> variants that can come, Craig. I'm, I agree with you that we will see this bubble slow. I don't think it's going to burst anytime soon. Just too many variants to choose from. And I guess there's also like, there's the, the sort of, you know, we often look at things in terms of like, what's a good product or what's a good use case and what has a real market, but there's so yeah. much speculative investment in being like, I got to get in on AI. And so, you know, like what happened with crypto, everybody's just like, yeah. I know nothing about this and I'm going all in. And so like that kind of inflates all these valuations and stuff. So I imagine yeah. that there's a lot of that right now to people who sort of give a cursory glance at kind of business headlines and they go, I know I should invest. AI seems to be the hot new topic. This seems to be a company everybody's excited about. You know, I'm going to going to invest, but that doesn't mean that the product or ha has even a market or there, there's a good use case that people will continuously pay for, you know? Okay. Hmm. I, I'm going to be annoying and actually agree with all of you and play it safe, <laughs> but then still be annoying about it because uh, I think, you know, well, what you just said is really interesting. Like, I think AI is a bit different than a lot of the other kind of like tech bubbles that we've seen because it's not like vaporware and smoke and mirrors. Um, and you're like, it's different and it's not like the concept of like five or 10 years ago where everybody's like, oh, you know, what's this theoretical? Like when everyone got obsessed with big data and machine learning, like it was very theoretical and a lot of buzzwords, but it is different now because to, you know, well, as you said, like, there are a thousand tools, but they actually exist and they're there. And I think to go back to then Craig and Bob, I'll agree with both of you. Cause I think like Bob said, there's, you know, I don't think the bubble's going anywhere anytime soon. There are just so many tools. Like we were just chatting before, well, you, you got here, uh, come comparing notes on a couple tools uh, ourselves here in the background and right. Like it's amazing. I think we're in like the age of AI, uh, well, uh, for me personally, I'm in AI over overload because I like geek out and love this stuff. So I have so many tools that I'm like, I find the hardest part being like choosing which one to use for each task. Because uh, it's like, oh, I need to generate some content. Should I use this one or that one? And as Bob said, you know, like, do I want this one because of these features? And like, I want to write this in Klingon and because I want this to optimize. And uh, so like kind of picking the tool for the job is the hard part. But to agree with Craig. <laughs> now he's going to placate everyone. But at the same time, I think what happens, although what do I know? Literally nothing. And again, I have not done any research. This is just a totally unbiased, uh, sorry, very biased, uh, unfounded opinion. Um, I think that the, these kind of markets are what kind of create the um, opportunities when we do see like single uh, products and firms kind of emerge as victorious. So like we'll see 20 different AI tools that are doing pretty well. And then one for whatever blessed numbers of reasons comes out and emerges as like the champion. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just thinking selfishly, like a little example, you know, like when you're talking about 11 labs, um, now, and it's, it's creepy because it's true. There's so many like voice cloning, um, tools that are available. Right. And they're, you know, it's like, how do you pick and choose? So I do think this could be that opportunity where people like in the know, so people who become like regular users might still end up having the lesser known ones and using them. And those tools will hopefully like continue to exist and be refined and add more features. But then you end up with one, maybe it is 11 labs, uh, but you end up with one who emerges as like the common, the, the, the common one for the common user. So kind of like um, the example that I was thinking of was actually Canva. Uh, where, you know, like, I don't know about you guys, I had subscriptions to like social media graphic design templating software for years. It's great, you know, um, not Canva, but a few other ones that I picked up licenses for. And it's been so nice, right? You plop in your little brand kit and whatever else and boop, there you go, you know, in integrate some stock and slap together all your visuals in five minutes. Um, and there are, you know, I'm sure hundreds of those that are available now. 
Um, and yet we live in this era where now pretty much like Canva has really recently just become absolute industry standard, right? Um, but at the same time, I think people who do this and will, you would see that a lot probably, right? With people with founders that you're coaching, like, you know, there are people who are still in the marketing space who might need something that's more specific, like to Bob's point about Klingon again, right? So like, I think it's just really interesting when this happens, because I think what we might see in the AI space is having like one or two kind of champions, these big products that emerge as the ones that get all the traction. But there's still hopefully space for all the others who can focus on something that's really unique about their product or service. They might just not reach that like wild unicorn market appeal. Okay. So we have the couple of comments here, but I like this one. Beep boop. I haven't even came into the market yet. And there's value. <laughs> at whatever. Uh, my when I say the bubble burst, I think it's a valuation thing. You know, there mm. are, we guys we said crypto, but you put a uh, blockchain in your name a few years ago and your valuation doubled, right? So this is a situation where is a voice cloning startup worth $1.1 billion when there's literally dozens of them out there that, you know, we've come across in our, never mind, you know, actually looking to see which, which is the best, uh, um voice cloning software out there so as as these tools start to evolve i think the valuations only can come down um there's some of these that'll go up because maybe they're unique in certain ways but i also see that think that we're going to start bumping into limitations where we're going to see the error rate start getting high enough um mm -hmm. that it becomes problematic outside of certain fields so we talk about um, for example this rabbit r1 device looks amazing but the thing that i like is this large action model that's supposed to be behind it that's supposed to be delivered after the device sometime so is that actually going to come to fruition after the device yeah oh. when you yeah this is oh no <laughs> sorry so, now i'm really depressed sorry yeah. <laughs> okay. did you order one Oh, there you go. Round four. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. The, I don't, the device itself is interesting. I let care less about that than more about the large action model, which is supposed to do stuff on your behalf, where a lot of this stuff can create words and talk for you. The large action model does stuff. I don't know if you've looked at any of the demos, but as an example, he, he points his camera at his computer. He's doing a spreadsheet. He says, take this um add the data for anybody who mentioned this in their comments and add a column for that the device does it and emails them a new spreadsheet with the column and he emails it back and asks it to do other things so once you can start getting to the point of asking ai to go log on publish stuff for you do whether it's a voice command or automatically this becomes extremely there's a lot of things i would like to automate but this is when i talk about when the error rate starts to potentially become risky because when it's doing stuff and publishing stuff that's not right publishing yeah. error stuff when it's making these mistakes uh what we call hallucinations i've talked to lots of ai founders and you know ai collapse is a real thing it mm -hmm. happens and they don't know why and so i'm i think we're going to be bumping up to some of these limitations and this dream world of all to me, I've been around a while, like Bob said. Uh, uh, I didn't say you've been around. I said some no, of, uh, of us. <laughs> <laughs> we, I've been through this in the 80s. It was called smart systems. And if you put AI in your name for a couple of years, you know, your valuation went through the roof. And a few years later, no one wanted to talk to you because we bumped in the limits. It wasn't going there. None of the investments went very far. Mm. So and I think the one. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry to cut you off, Craig, but I yeah. just wanted to react to something Alex said, which was like, you know, these ideas of, you know, there's going to be a product for the masses and then maybe more specific ones for different businesses or industries or job titles. What, coming from the world of like solo founders or early stage startup founders, I understand that's not the whole, you know, the whole world by any means as much as we think it is sometimes. But I just think about the way I work and the kind of business transactions I'm involved with. I really, really dislike it when I know somebody's sending me something automated. Like even if it's yeah. something that they that their VA sent or something yeah. that they sent stock. And so I think about like how much kind of reputational damage will will happen with the overuse of AI. And I'm wondering if we're going to see 
a bubble bursting or a sort of pendulum swing back towards authenticity and, and doing things more manually and analog. I mean, I think about like these retreats where people are paying thousands yeah. of dollars to have somebody take away their phone I'm so fine. they can yeah. just exist in the present moment, you know, yeah. and, and like that, that to me sort of suggests that these things do kind of come in these pendulum I motions. I think that's really interesting. Yeah. We'll talk about yeah. humanity because, uh, you know, the whole point of AI is to replicate humanity, right? The idea is that we're not supposed to detect it's a VA or it's not actually them, right? That's some of the purposes of some of the AI things. And the other interesting thing about humanity is, and especially when Craig talks about investors, <clears throat> I don't like to think of the present. I always think about like that next generation of user of AI and that next generation of investor. And I think what, what I understand as why an investor invests isn't gonna be valid by the time, you know, in, in the next five years even, because we're gonna have a new generation of investors that have different thinking, but going back to your, sorry, but going back to your point, well, um, that's the whole point is how do we, you know, the less automated it feels, the more success it's going to be, right? So I would agree with you. I, I do agree with you that humanity is always, this this need for human connection is always gonna be important, but that's why we have things like, well, VR is not at that state yet, but that's why we have movies that talk about VR that replicate pretty much the real world. So that's my only concern there. Somebody said, yeah. sorry, Alex, I just wanted to, to react to okay. this comment. One of our <laughs> classes has 800,000 students. I'm not sure how many smiley faces the instructors can place on papers without the use of automation. I have oh. so many questions about that comment. First of all, <laughs> what the fuck class are you in that has 800,000 students? I need to know some context there. And second of all, I mean, yeah, smiley faces are great. Everybody loves a smiley face. But what is the value of that smiley face? Fair, yeah. What yeah. is the value of the teacher talking to you and saying, hey, I noticed your work has been falling off recently. Is anything happening at home? Yeah. Um, what is the value of that human interaction with a teacher versus a sm an, an automated smiley face that 800,000 other people get? That's the kind of thing I'm thinking of. I know everybody I is but obsessed with scale and everybody is obsessed with, and I know I'm the old, like, you're the old. I'm the old thinking person. I'm the one who can't just jump on the AI train and start choo-chooing down gotcha. the track as fast as everyone else. But I just, it really, really, I think bothers me on a deep, deeply humane level that everybody is just going for scope, magnitude, and scale versus human interaction, which is so important for our happiness and our meaning and our ultimately why we're here on this planet. That's my rant. So I'll, I'll, I'll back. No, and, and you're absolutely right. But again, I think this question from Craig comes from the idea of, you know, is this bubble going to burst from, from AI investors because they don't always, they don't necessarily use emotion in their thinking the way you and I would think, yeah, when I see my children engage with their best friend beside them on text, I cry, mm -hmm. but this, is, <laughs> this question isn't about what you and I think is, 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 is right. Because I agree with you. Uh, human connectivity is important. I mean, without human connectivity, that especially since COVID, that's why you see an increase in depression, increase of self-harm. But that's a whole other topic. The whole point is A, investors are going to see that this is going to replicate and automate human activity so well. Craig, I don't think it's six months to a year. It is still going to take a while to get to the place of like iRobot or not iRobot. Was that the movie? Whatever, the Will Smith movie. Yeah. 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 Anyway, sorry. I just wanted to add that, Will, for sure. But yeah, I'm yeah, on no, that side. I just know. I, I agree with you. Like logically, realistically speaking, you're correct. Morally speaking, I just have that. Like I have yeah. that drum to beat because I'm just so. I, yeah. like, I and I'm in the tech world, so everybody's like, "Woo AI!" I'm just like, "Jesus, can we just fucking put some brakes on the train a little bit, yeah. like two yeah. percent?" Well, yeah. So can first I, of I, all, I, just before we get in, I am older than dirt, according to my buddy Trevor <laughs> Short. Oh so no! I win I'm, the old I'm, category. I'm, I'm users, that's horrible. Um, and we have some more uh, feedback for you uh, on your comment there. Um, uh, Don't say Bob. Will. Okay, good. <laughs> you know, how do we know to give attention? You know, when it's remote like this, what uh, what would happen if we knew what indicators to look for? Um, what if we Those knew what type of attention people needed? It's like these are. Um, you know, from a when you're doing remote, and this comes to a secondary conversation I'm going to have in a minute about remote work. Yeah. Um, how do you give this attention to a hundred people? 
And I agree with you that the more, the more you can do the personal thing. And this is why I, I really like getting together face to face, doing our startup investor drinks, doing our co-founder uh, meetup, uh, matchup events and stuff, because it's completely different than doing a group thing or doing something like this. And you, and the intimacy is much higher. Um, but these tools, automated tools are for a lot of things. So I, I agree with you that um, it's, we need to be personable. But I get it to do to draft up agendas for me. One of the things I like AI to do is uh, create a lot of social media for me. I've got a lot of text to do because I have three, four live events a week online and in person. And I have partners that I want to share social media with to get them to share. So I've got 100 tweets to create about 100 events that are all different. So mm -hmm. that's when I start using something like AI to say, all right, <laughs> how much of that will get used? How much of that actually works? You're only using 5% of what AI is, right? No, so I'm just saying from a personal point of view, where do you draw the line of personalizing something versus so using AI? To, to, to I, would to ask, I would ask you about Replica, right? The Replica app. Mm. Have you seen the Replica app? No. Nope. Well, the Replica app is designed to create connectivity for lonely people. And I will tell you, mm. it may be more used for nefarious purposes than I would like. But nonetheless, it is this sort of, it creates this boyfriend or girlfriend that you can have regular chats with on your cell phone. And it's meant to feel, because it learns from you. So wow. it's meant to be more authentic. So I'm with you, like the business side of AI, yeah. But I can't, there's so much more to learn about human connectivity and, and how AI is going to try and replicate that. that yeah, man, that bubble ain't burst anytime soon. Like I don't. What was I the name of that company? Replicant? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, uh, I don't know. No, I, I, I say that because yeah, a friend my, of a friend. <laughs> my first startup when I came to Toronto was called Simple Suitor. And mm -hmm. we created uh, situations that surprise and, and delight. And one of our product was the fake boyfriend, fake girlfriend that sure. would text yeah. you, would send pictures, would do stuff. So it was for all sorts of reasons. Like somebody wanted to pretend they're in a relationship for any number of reasons, or they wanted to feel good about themselves. Yeah. Um, but you know, so this is, it continues to happen. It just becomes more and more automated and scalable. But at the same time, like, we're, like Will says, you really have to work at getting good output out of AI. That's not verbose. That doesn't sound like, you know, just no, not how it doesn't sound like people speak. Yeah, I got you. That's fair. Okay, before Craig, you go change the topic because he does this. He surprises you, and then uh, and then like the moment is lost. So uh, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, I need to add to my tirade, my little ramble here, because <laughs> yeah. you all had so many good points that I cannot leave. Um, well, it's funny when you were like, you know, it, it, you're kind of playing devil's advocate. And if you hadn't said what you had, I would have taken your position. But since you said that, now I'm yeah. going to counter you. So, yes. <laughs> um, you know, because uh, similarly, like I use, a, we use a lot of um, AI and automation. And, you know, to be honest, what I've noticed is that, um, frankly, like some of the tools do it better. Um, some of the outreach tools and the, the tools that we're using now for mostly on the sales and outreach side, but, you know, it applies in many areas. Um, like the the work of the AI because they're like specially trained and built for that purpose. Like they're better than the humans. And I think, you know, I think Bob, was it you who said about kind of the concept of duplication, right? And like kind of that's, you know, it's like AI is taking over. I guess, um, you know, I guess like <laughs> that actually, to me, I don't see that as a bad thing. Like for me, um, I'm, you know, I get like, I am an early adopter. I'm like waiting for someone to give me a chip and an implant, sign me up. Uh, you know, <laughs> I know this is terrible. Uh, but you know, like, I think there's place for all of us to play. Like, I do think to your, you know, the, the technology is not perfect enough. We can't let it go. As you said, like, yeah. it can't be hands off, yeah. but I still think like, I think we as humans still have immense value. And that's in like the bookend. So that's like coming up with the ideas and giving direction. Like, what do I need? What am I writing? What is this about? What's the purpose? And then on the other end in like reviewing and editing and like looking at outputs. And so I think we still have a lot of value there, but I think that like the value of AI is 
in that not only can it duplicate the work of humans, but it can improve up like it can do things better than we can. Um, and you know, we're limited by our own intelligence. And that's what I think is so cool about like iRobot and all the futuristic films is that like, and that's what's really interesting about generative AI instead of just like out of the box AI or machine learning or big data. It's not just the data and it's not just taking the data and looking for patterns. It's actually like letting, you know, that that true intelligence evolve so that it can do more than we can do and actually like supplement and enhance kind of our own potential as humans, which I think is really cool. It's still scary. And like, I do think I'll be killed by robots, but I think it's still, you know, <laughs> but in the meantime, <laughs> it's I pretty think, exciting. I think, I, I think AI, I think as long as we evolve with AI evolving, you're right, right? Mm -hmm. If we become stagnant like those humans in Wally. -E, and we're just in those yes. four, for sure. But it, as we evolve and they evolve, yeah. then I can see it. By the way, every time you kept saying it just does it better, I heard my ex-wife's voice. So we're going to find different. <laughs> it's just it's better. better. Can I, like, and then just like, a, you know, um, Craig, the last piece I just wanted to mention, I know this is a, like unsexy and boring too, but what, as it relates to valuations, I don't know, you guys know more about that in terms of like an investor mindset um, and what investors are looking for. Um, but I think you're right. Like Craig, we'll, we'll see, you know, the kind of crazy, um, multi-billion evaluate valuations, like those, I don't think are going to stick around, as you said, like just as it gets more competitive. Um, but I think what'll be really interesting too, is to see what happens, um, from a regulatory perspective. And I know that's very boring, but no, like that, what, you know, like when it, we talk about blockchain, we talk about finance and FinTech. And I think that's the case here too. Like, especially when we see all of the, like, you know, you use the example of 11 labs and the voice cloning, when we talk about like deep fake and all the crazy, like <laughs> Trump impersonations that are all over the internet right now, as we head into campaign season, mm -hmm. you know, if there is one company or many who um, basically gets shut down for anything from a regulatory perspective, or on the flip side, if they get a thumbs up and a backing from any legitimate kind of body, um, I think that's where we'll immediately see impact from a valuation perspective. Like any company that gets like thumbs up. I just want to shout from, out. Yeah. Them, yeah. Right, sorry, like, Alex, to that point, I just want to shout out Fairly AI, who uh, were clients of mine through Techstars. Uh, David right. and Fion, they, they, they have a company called Fairly AI, which is a regulatory body that helps companies using AI, as, as far as I understand it comply with the governance and the, and the risk and everything. And they nice. just, you know, got it. they just got funding and stuff. And so like they're, they're doing well in their own right as their own company, mm. as a regulatory body. So I think that also speaks to the, uh, that speaks to what you're saying, Alex. And I just want to give them a shout out because they're awesome. And they really, they really believe in, in the dangers of AI, but, but also believe that, you know, you can't put it back in the box. So how do we make sure it's regulated properly, which I That's think awesome. is very so yeah, before we jump to the next topic, I just want to make this point from a couple of people. Chat GTP passed the medical school. It would take me a while to do that. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, Chat GTP could be diagnosing you and then at the same time decide that you we should put a toy car inside your stomach in nice. the middle of the thing from a it just does this hallucinatory thing and decides, hey, let's put a carburetor inside a human. And so, you know. <laughs> out of the blue see maybe we don't want that and then it also mentioned I, I um, argue, well craig i would argue we've had dr malpraxis who's where oh doctor. fair enough <laughs> <laughs> so, right. and some yeah. people might trust uh, a, a computer or an ai more yeah, um yeah. and why would we automate travel we why don't we ride horses to the grocery store well first of all horses are way too mix expensive they and, are they, <laughs> and they take too much room <laughs> Where am I going to store my horse? Also, store our speaking of Wally, -E, it's like we are much we are much less healthy since cars came along. So just just because it happened yeah. doesn't mean yeah. it's just a net good. Do you think yeah, all yeah. the people who die every year because of cars? Like, there's this fallacy that people. I, I'm sorry, I'm. I always get keyed up. There's like a fallacy that people say where it's like. Well, this thing happened and we're all still here. It's like, yeah, well, it didn't cause a nuclear apocalypse. It doesn't mean it was a good thing. <laughs> like people are like, you know, Gary V keeps uh, love that guy, but he keeps talking about like there was a thing called the tractor and that came along and it's like that was devastating. There was yeah. re a refugee crisis that swept through the United States. Everybody from Oklahoma moved to California and created this like intense mm. immigrant crisis within the United States. 
There was mm. the grapes, like the grapes of wrath that s- says it all. It completely breaks down how mm. horrific this moment was in history. And just because it happened, it doesn't mean that it's a great thing that we should all just be jumping up and down about. So that mm. fallacy I keep seeing repeated again and again that like, well, this thing happened and we don't do it this way anymore. It's like but that that doesn't pass a judgment on whether or not it was good for us, whether mm-hmm. that thing happened. Sorry, well, I don't think it's, we can, but we can't really pass judgment on like good and bad and ethics, right? It's not, it's like, that's the nature of innovation and change. Like it's going to happen. It's just a question of like how long it'll take and and who's going to be involved and what that's going to look like. Like, and I think that, uh, I don't know, like, it's like super, I think AI is just going to make us all really dumb. Like, I think we're all going to have to learn to like really pretend to like, we're going to have to work hard to not become totally stupid. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm, you know, like tiny, simple, stupid example, but you know, GPS, right? So like, yeah. remember guys back in the day, you yeah, know, and GPS was like anymore. kind of, right? Like in the beginning, it was kind of an elitist thing. If you were rich and you had it in a car and you had your like on store or star or whatever else, it was like smaller market. And then like, thank God, you know, really, um, I assume it was really because of the iPhone and the smartphone revolution that like brought <laughs> it to being common. And so I don't know about you guys, like I like live in downtown Toronto and used to be really good with geography and directions. And now I cannot find my way to something three blocks from here because I don't ever need to. Um, And, you know, I'm worried about that. That happened today. I have chat GPT do lots of my um, uh, admin work. I was trying not to use a bad word there Uh, anyway. And so (laughs) earlier today I had this little ugly, you know, spreadsheet that I wanted it to break down for me just because it's filled in rows and I want it in columns and whatever. And, you know, I'm used to sending this over and ChatGPT like had a fit today. I don't know why. Uh, today, it just wasn't able. Today, it was like, no, sorry. And so it gave me, which I think was really appreciated. I appreciate it. It gave me all the instructions for what to do. Oh, you can make a macro and you can do this and that. And I was pissed off. I was like, because now I'm just used to the thing doing it for me. And I was like, what do you mean that you want me to go do the actual work like I used to? You know, and so <laughs> it's a tiny example. But like, I think that that's, for me, that's the worry is that we're going to have all these amazing tools that can do awesome stuff and then actually stop being able to have skills to do anything on our yeah, fair enough. But keep in mind, like what you're sharing is more muscle memory than it is intelligence. My belief is that if it allows us to replace muscle memory, maybe it opens up creativity. Maybe we have thoughts and non-institutional driven thinking yeah. from academia that allow us to even dream up. Careful, that- careful. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Radical <laughs> thoughts. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. yeah. I meant right, to you we're- here we're great here don't worry about it we're, we're all we all believe in radical thinking here as uh, entrepreneurs and founders it's how it goes yeah. this has been startup talk toronto's startup podcast for more exclusive content the episode vault and to be part of toronto starts community visit torontostarts.com get your name on the newsletter mailing list and check out our upcoming events For more episodes, subscribe now. And please recognize the time and work behind the scenes put into connecting you with the biggest visionaries, entrepreneurs, and innovators in Toronto by leaving a five-star review. Join us for more next episode from Toronto's most active entrepreneur and startup community on Startup Talk.